in a story, or a recognizable attribute in a character that conveys information to the audience. A trope becomes a cliché when it's overused. Sadly, some of these tropes often perpetuate offensive stereotypes. What do Inception, the Transformers, and the Muppets all have in common? Well, they all suffer from a trope called the Smurfette Principle. As defined by TV tropes, the Smurfette principle is the tendency for works of fiction to have exactly one female amongst an ensemble of male characters, in spite of the fact that roughly half of the human race is female. Unless a show is purposely aimed at a female viewing audience, the main characters will tend to be disproportionately male. In 1991, Katha Pollitt, a feminist essayist, wrote an article for the New York Times because she was disturbed by the lack of substantive female characters for her young daughter to watch. She found that most programming aimed at young people had a majority of male characters with just one female included in the group. She called this the Smurfette Principle. You've probably guessed by now that this trope was named after the only female Smurf in all of Smurfville. Once upon a time, the Smurfs were a harmonious, all-dude miniature civilization comprised entirely of good-natured little blue dudes living out their cooperative dude existence somewhere deep in their dude forest utopia. We've got lazy, grouchy, jokey, brainy, baby, and papa Smurf, and all their Smurf buddies living out their Smurfy existence free from any of those meddling, divisive, controlling, manipulative, mean women folk. But one day, the evil wizard Gargamel decided on a devilish plan to sabotage Smurfdom. And how will he do that? Yes, that's right, by creating a female Smurf. That's it! I'll get them through their hearts. I will send them a Smurfette! So Gargamel sent in Smurfette to cause divisions between the lovable blue creatures so he can capture and eat their tender blue flesh in a nice honey lemon sauce. Long story short, love and understanding won out when Papa Smurf worked some Smurf magic and transformed Gargamel's imposter into a real live Smurf girl. Sexy blonde hair, high heels and all. Down in the Hundred Acre Woods, we follow the adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Rabbit, Piglet, Eeyore, Owl and Tigger all dudes, of course. Oh, in fact, there's only one female character, Kanga, who shows up occasionally as the mother of Little Rue. Even Jim Henson didn't seem too keen on the women. Alongside Kermit, Gonzo, and Fozzie the Bear, Miss Piggy was the only female Muppet. We can even see the Smurfette principle outside of programming aimed at young people. So for example, you have George Lucas's original Star Wars trilogy, where Princess Leia is the only principal female character in the entire galactic empire. If you're like me, then you're probably thinking there's gotta be something wrong here. I mean, Star Trek has had a female captain, Buffy has saved the world from a demon apocalypse at least half a dozen times. This trope has gotta be a thing of the past, right? Ellen Page's character gets smurfetted in Inception as her character is the only female Dream Team member. Big Bang Theory has a primary cast of brainy men, plus the smurfette that lives across the hall. While there have been a small handful of female Autobots in the Transformers universe, Arcee is the only regularly reoccurring female cast member, and she only appeared in eight episodes out of the original series. She was set to appear in the first Transformers live-action film, but she was dropped and replaced with Ironhide. She did, however, appear in the second film, Revenge of the Fallen, which also happens to be one of the most sexist and racist films I've ever seen. This version of RC is either a hive mind with three different motorcycle components, or the other two bikes are her sisters. It's not exactly clear. The Autobots hangar. But it doesn't really matter anyway because they all get blown up at the end. Plus, they only appear on screen for a grand total of exactly. Follow us to the pillars. <laughs> 39 seconds. Even in most seasons of Jon Stewart's The Daily Show, there's only been one female correspondent at a time. The Smurfette principle is especially important to remember now because Hollywood is currently trying to remake everything and anything that we even vaguely remember from the 80s and 90s in an attempt to cash in on our collective nostalgia. You know, instead of maybe taking risks on things that are new and exciting. We even have a live action Smurfs movie coming out. We've had two big blockbuster movies based on the Transformers, and sadly, there's another one on its way. The 2009 Star Trek reboot by J.J. Abrams had Ohura as the only female character in the main bridge crew. 
And just like Star Trek, we can be sure that Hollywood is not going to try to bring gender equality into these reboots, but rather just stick with the Smurfettes. The problem with narratives infused with the Smurfette principle is not just the lack of women, but as Katha Pollitt points out in her New York Times article, boys define the group, its story, and its code of values. Girls exist only in relation to boys. Basically, this means that men are the default, and women get to be sidekicks or sexy decorations. Even when there's only one female primary cast member, as video blogger Nostalgia Chick points out in her Smurfette Principle video, they're usually just sexy female duplicates of their male counterparts. Disney was the one that kind of really started this interest in the whole default and deviation from default complex. Basically this idea that men seem to want a vagina version of themselves. That's an excellent point. Thank you, Nostalgia Chick. The Smurfette Principle is an alternative name for tokenism, or the token minority, which is the inclusion of one cast member from a marginalized group in an otherwise white, straight, male ensemble. We see this most often when writers include one person of color, and that character is usually painfully stereotyped. This is a little trick used by movie studios to pretend to appear multicultural and diverse, when really they're just upholding the status quo and not changing anything substantially. So here's a tip for all you Hollywood writers out there. It is in fact possible to have more than one woman in your script. Really, I swear it is. You could even have two or three women, or even the majority of your cast to be women. Here's a simple test you can ask yourself when you're writing your scripts. Does my movie have more than one woman on the primary cast? That's it. That's the whole test. If you answered no, then you need to go back to the drawing board. If you answer yes, then we can proceed to the Bechdel test. Once you've got two female characters who are talking to each other about things other than men, then we can talk about fully developed female characters. La, 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 sing a happy song. 